you can see this is what it looks like when you start up. Over here on the left um, course, we're in our first week, so you just click on week one. And here you can see it starts with lesson one and module one. So this is, um, you know, this is the lesson text right here, so you can read through this. And every once in a while, you'll come across one of these embedded videos. So this is kind of the heart of Instreamia. Instreamia teaches you languages through videos and interactive exercises. And the cool thing is, um, these exercises keep track of your progress. So as you work through the videos, you can see which ones you've done, which ones you haven't done, and that's how we'll determine your, you know, grade in the course. So um, in order to start this one, we're going to go ahead and go to play video. So I want you to notice right here these buttons. You notice it says play video. Um, and some of the other ones, for down here for example, it says live listening. So if it's got this little green chalkboard, then it's going to be an actual exercise with interactive questions. In this case, and it explains this in the text up here as well, this is just playing the video. So there's no questions associated. It, it, the activity here is simply to watch the video. So we're going to go ahead and click play. And you'll see it loads up with the video and the subtitles. Bienvenidos al curso. So you can see what's happening here is it's actually highlighting the captions. The captions are all down here. So what's being spoken. Bienvenidos. And it highlights them as you go through the video. So it, you can just play it and you can see them come up. But here's where the cool interactive part comes in. Um, this is what you can do um, to learn more than you know just watching the video by itself and figure out what all of this means is you can you can first look on the right to hear what they're actually saying. So on the right we have um, we have the native Spanish text which is you know in this case bienvenidos al curso just as was spoken um, pardon my terrible pronunciation um, and then on the left you can see what it means um, over here and the cool thing here um, and the real benefit of using Instreamia is to put Bienvenidos and the cool thing here is is that we're going to just put um, our mouse over these different words Tener. and we can hear what the word is what the word sounds like so you can see if I put my mouse over Tener um, it's going to actually pronounce that Tener. Additionally, you can see on the on the right it says <clears throat> tener. Um, it means have, and you can also see on the left the specific word that it matches up to. So, es mi placer tenerles aquí. Um, you can see it's my pleasure to have you here, and then tener matches straight up with have. Um, and you can also see it's turning green. This is to indicate that it's a verb. Um, placer. Es mi placer which means pleasure, is orange because it's a noun. Um, and you don't have to pay too much attention to what these mean, but um, <clears throat> this, as you watch the colors, you can kind of get a better sense for how the, the sentence is structured. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video a little bit more. Es mi placer tenerles aquí. Yo soy Scott Rapp, y soy el maestro principal para este curso. Hablo inglés, español, y un poco de italiano. And you can pause it at any point, and if you want to repeat a part that you didn't hear, you just use these little buttons on the left. Y un poco de italiano. Soy profesor de español. And you can see right there, it's going to um, repeat those phrases for you, so that you can listen to them as many times as necessary to uh, catch what they mean and under, you know, catch the words as they say it. And I know there are a lot of beginners in the class, and I fully expect you to need to listen to some of these a lot of times. Um, don't be ashamed by that, and don't be afraid to just keep clicking that little play sentence button over and over again until you can hear what they're saying. Exactly. And, and then the same thing goes Soy with understanding the meaning. Professor. Um, we have all these tools here, and you know it's just going to take a little bit of time 
getting a familiar with the language and, and starting to learn what each of the words mean. So anyway, this is that was the entire goal of this particular activity, which was simply to watch this video. So after we watch it all the way to the end, um, we're going to go ahead and close out. You can also leave a little comment down here. Um, tell Scott that you're happy or that, you know, like was left here mucho gusto or something you thought about his introduction or you can ask him some questions um, and interact with the other learners on the site. So we'll head, go ahead and push back for now and you can see that whereas this used to be gray um, it's now green and it's showing that we got the one question correctly. Well in fact there's no questions for this one since it's just the play video one so it's just showing us the one question was to view the video so we viewed the video correctly. And you can see we got 10 out of 10 on for that. So not bad. We're on a good start um, for learning Spanish here and getting the points in the course. So what we'll do is continue down on um, module two. This gets a little bit more complicated, but um, actually in Streamia makes it really easy for you. So all we have to do is you can see um, as you read through this, it'll make a little bit more sense. But Scott, this time we're going to go through the same video. But instead of <clears throat> just watching the video, we're actually going to do what's called the live listening exercise. So live listening, we're going we're gonna to click this button here and it'll start live listening. Y también soy programador. Um, and it, it remembers the position you were at before, so you, can, so you don't have to re-download the video. Um, but anyway, you can go back to the beginning and press play. Bienvenidos al curso. Es mi placer tenerles aquí. Okay, so this is the same video and the same captions that we just went over last time, but this time it's kind of testing our knowledge a little bit. How well were we are we able to hear the different words? And, you know, it would be very difficult for a beginner to have to listen to an entire sentence and tell them what you said. Um, maybe even impossible. But just to pick out one word amongst other words, this is an exercise that you can do. So this is a kind of a beginner level exercise that um, that anyone can do if they spend a little bit of time practicing with it. And the first time it's going to seem like it's impossible. It's going to seem like they're speaking too fast. I promise as you play it back again and again, you will start to be able to hear it. So we're going to play it back one more time and we're going to listen for what he says after Tener. Bienvenidos al curso. Es mi placer tenerles aquí. So, es mi, pla es mi placer tenerles aquí. So, we're going to have to choose. And, you know, we probably didn't hear it perfectly um, because we're beginners. And that's okay. But we know it wasn't bienvenidos. Uh, that would have been too long of a word. Es mi placer tener bienvenidos aquí. It's too long. So, we can just sort of use process of elimination. Um, and let's say we couldn't quite hear it very well, but we think maybe it's Tener K a key. So we're going to click K. Oh, shoot. So the, the red, um, the button turned red. So now we know that we chose the wrong answer for this. Um, and you can see, oops, K wasn't the right answer. Try again. Um, and so all we have to do is choose the one we think next. So, okay, so we weren't sure if it was one of uh, this one or this one. So this time we'll choose um, Lace. But one more thing I wanted to point out. When we clicked on K here, um, and Streamia knows you didn't get K right, so it's thinking maybe you want to learn a little bit about what K is. And we don't really have to worry about that too much for this exercise, but in case you're wondering, K is actual, actually means that. So we know it doesn't really fit in, into this one over, um, that it was the wrong answer. So we're going to go ahead and choose Les. Yo soy Scott Rapp. And you can see what happened is, I'm going to pause the video now, it got Aquí. the correct answer. Now you got it. Lace was the right answer. So our exercise progress, what happens? It, it says that we answered one correctly. Well, that's because that entire question was one question. And in order for you to get it right, you have to get it right on your first try. So this one counts as an incorrect question. If we want to see how we're doing on our questions and specifically which ones we missed, we can see over here the numbers. So there's six to go, six to answer, 
one wrong so far and five to go. And we can see specifically which ones we answered so far by clicking the summary. And you can see less than a minute ago we answered incorrectly. We were supposed to say lace and we chose K, but eventually we chose lace, which was the correct one. And these are blue because we never clicked on them. Um, if you want to start over with the exercise, there's also that button to do that here. We're going to go ahead and continue. So one quick note, um, it, it tracks your score, but it'll use your best score. So if you go through it once and you get half of them right, then you go through it again and get them all right, we'll just take the best score out of those so you'll get them all right. Yeah, and it's really easy because in streaming it will actually display your best score in the lesson part. So I'll show you that. Um, well, maybe we'll just go back to it really quick so you can see, and we'll just hop back in. So if we go down to the video we were, you can see that our best score um, was to get 0 out of 6. We only answered 1, we got it wrong, we left 5 unanswered. Okay, we didn't earn any points for that. That's okay. So we're going to go ahead and go back to it. And it's going to actually let us continue off continue where we left off. If we refresh the page, we would have to start all over again. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and play through the video. Nuestro principal para este curso. Hablo inglés, español y un poco de italiano. Soy profesor de español. También soy programador. Creo sistemas para enseñar idiomas. Okay, and so you can see what's happening is it's pausing for the one, the question again, and having us choose. So down here we, we see Espanol, oh, Mido, that came up again, Programador, and Principal. So after we listen to it, um, we, we try to hear the right one. Profesor de Espanol, también soy programador. Creo sistemas para enseñar idiomas. Okay, did you hear it? He said, también soy programador. So, we're going to go ahead and click programador. Tengo 28 años y estoy casado. Aún no tengo hijos. And you can see it goes on to the next one and then pauses. All you have to do is, is go ahead and continue to click through these and... Soy delgado también. As you choose the correct answers, it'll continue. So, soy delgado también. Tengo dos hermanos y una hermana. Mucho gusto en conocerles, aunque solo sea virtualmente. And you can see, aunque solo sea virtualmente. So, we're going to choose virtualmente. And you can see here, um, sometimes users, um, learners have had a hard time figuring out what where the last question unanswered is, and this is kind of tricky, right? Because it's a big long text, and uh, maybe if you scroll through it, you'll see it, maybe you won't. Um, what we did was we made this new button called Jump to Question. So this will automatically jump to the, the first question in the text that's unanswered. Estoy casado. Aún no tengo hijos. Okay, so here you can see, um, Aún no tengo hijos, and so we got to the last question. And after you click the last question, it's going to just show you the results screen just to let you know that you finished the exercise. And you can see the questions you answered and in what order. So, um, and also you can see how long ago. So you can see uh, we did our first one six minutes ago and we finished just now. So it took us about six minutes and we got through this first exercise. If we wanted to do it again because we didn't like that score, we can just hit restart. And we'll just have to close this. And you can see it's got all new exercises for us. Um, and what's going to happen is it's going to ask us new questions depending on the words that we missed last time. And in fact, the words that we missed in any video up until this time. So that way we can focus on what is important for us to learn. Um, as in, for, you know, I can focus on what's important for me to learn. And instead of just doing cookie cutter exercises or something like that. This is actually helping us work on specifically our own um, learning objectives. So that's pretty much all there is to it. If you fill it out again um, and you do better than your next time, it'll replace it. But you can see when we go back um, right here, when we scroll down, it's correctly recorded and we've got five correct, one wrong out of six total. And for assessment points, well, there's a little bit of rounding happening here, but that gives us 
8 out of the 10 assessment points. Um, so that's kind of how the, the main exercises work. Um, the, the key things to pay attention to here are um, which exercise the instructor has selected, what activity this is based on what this button is. And remember, if it's got this green one here, it means there's going to be questions to answer. And if it's this logo here, it means it's just going to be playing the video. Do you want to show them a writing exercise, Ryan? I think that one's a little bit different, so maybe it would be good to go through one. Okay, yeah. This one, uh, in, I think it's in Module 6 of Lesson 1. Okay, so we're going to go to Lesson 1. Um, if you click on these, you can kind of expand them out. We're going to click Module 6. And down in Module 6, we have a flashcard reading. Flashcard reading. Okay, flashcard writing. So you can see this is the name of the activity we're going to do. It's a flashcard writing exercise. And the difference between flashcard and live exercises is that flashcards are going to focus on one word at a time rather than working from the flow of a video. And the advantage of doing this is that you can focus on the word specifically um, rather than focusing on uh, understanding you know, the video. So this is kind of just another angle of attack to learn things. Um, to learn your vocabulary. So this writing exercise, this one's quite a bit different than any of the other exercises. I'll show you how it works. Curso. So it takes a second to load and, and it's doing a little calculation. It might take maybe five or ten seconds to load because it's figuring out which one, which word is most important for you to learn. So in this case, we, we've got um, this phrase here and we know that the word means two and we have to produce, we have to think of our, on our own, that's why it's kind of like writing, if you were to write something you would have to think of the word that you wanted to write um, and you would choose whichever one you thought fit best in here. So bienvenidos something el curso. Um, so maybe it's bienvenidos ul curso and you can see, oops, u wasn't the right answer. Okay, so we'll, we'll try it. Ah. Ah. And after you get it right, it very quickly shows you the completed thing and then actually pronounces it for you so you can reinforce your understanding of the correct pronunciation. Um, in this case, so the next one, this gets a little bit trickier. Um, you can see there's three spaces. So we have to choose these blocks have to go into these three spaces in some order. And there's two ways to do this. You can either click on them down here, or you can actually start typing them into typing them on your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and do the clicking option. Um, and let's say I think this means, let's say I think the word is dos veni bien. Okay, so it says, oops, dos veni bien wasn't the right answer. Um, so we know it means welcome, we're not quite sure. But you'll notice that the one that we got correct, veni, that stayed there. So something, some, something veni something was what we have to <laughs> guess now. And you can reuse these more than once. So if you thought it was veni, 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 you know, it's possible that that could actually be the correct answer. Um, but let's say we think it's maybe bienvenidos. 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 And it says it again so that you can get the correct the pronunciation and, and listening down as you work through it. So the next one is is um, the. Does anyone know what the means in Spanish? I happen to know, so I'm going to type it in. Uh, I'm going to type the E first, and then I'm going to type the L. And there you go. And the reason why L is in that sentence is actually a contraction. A plus L is A. So it's kind of an implicit L. Right, okay. Um, good point on that. And also, when um, you, you may remember that I originally guessed Bienvenidos Ul Curso, so that's why when I put in the U and I got it wrong, it's going to quiz me on it again. So I'm going to go ahead and now I remember it wasn't Ul, it was All, so I'm going to put in the correct answer this time by typing A, ah. and, and then it goes correctly. Same thing with Bienvenidos, because remember I thought it was Dos Veni Bien um, the first time. <laughs> And I'm, I see I'm a real beginner. Uh, <laughs> so, but then I remembered, okay, it was actually bienvenidos. And 
Bienvenidos. This repetition makes it so that even a beginner like me who thinks maybe it's dos veni bien, um, you know, can even learn it because I remember it was only like two cards ago, so I can I can definitely get it this time. And that action of typing in the correct thing and recalling it on your own, that is exactly what your brain needs to do in order to train itself for a foreign language. And what we're going to do is eventually that's going to kind of space out over time. So we're going to maybe not review it for a little while and then, you know, in Streamia we'll automatically schedule those reviews so that um, it'll get a little bit harder each time, but never overwhelm us. Okay, so the next one is something Profesor de Español. Um, I'm going to guess soy. Like soy sauce. Soy. Right? Good job. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm getting them right. Um, one more note on this um, is that mm. it's actually going to start getting harder as the words get more advanced. So if you do lots and lots of writing exercises for... Um, one video. Oh, that's another thing I need to bring up. All of these words that it's choosing belong to the video that we were looking at when we clicked on the button. So that's why all of these are, you'll, you'll recognize these sentences because they're the ones we were just learning from. And the reason we do that, instead of just quizzing you on random vocabulary words, you know, like you know, many software, language learning software will kind of give you just sort of a, a random list to work through, um, is because we really want you to reinforce what you're learning in the videos. Because in the videos, you're learning an actual thing, right? You're not learning just a bunch of random combinations of words. You're learning how to introduce yourself. And so the point of this is to think about using these words in an introduction. So, es mi something tener la aquí. So now I'm going to have to, this is forcing me to remember a useful phrase and not just any random useful phrase, a phrase that I know the purpose of, right? I know we use this in an introduction because this is what I've been working on in this unit. So anyway, that's the whole point of the Instreamia platform is to really reinforce these connections from different angles um, and to accommodate people who learn from different ways. And, and, you know, some people will love this writing exercise. Some people will find the meaning exercise more useful. Um, and some people do best by actually composing their own assignments and submitting them for Scott, to Scott um, and Diana for review, who give you detailed comments. Um, but no matter what your best learning style is, I think everyone can benefit from doing um, you know, all of these different activities because they kind of round out your skill in the language. Uh, would you agree, Scott? Oh, definitely, yeah. OK. So anyway, so that's let's call that um, a wrap for the writing exercise for sure. Oh, just real quickly, um, you can view the score summary just like before and you can see what what you typed and what you were supposed to type and uh, it's a little bit less, it's a little bit more confusing because it doesn't record the order um, and, and maybe we'll work on re improving the screen a little bit but you can kind of get an idea of the ones that you're getting correct and incorrect. So let's go ahead and go back and we'll cut that part out. Um, okay so so now that we did the writing exercise, you can see, um, let's go ahead and just observe that our Instreamia recorded our exercise. Okay, so you can see here it was. Um, and we did, we did there were 15 questions, we got five correct, um, and two of them incorrect. So the way this calculates this, by the way, is that we got five correct out of 15 total. And so we got you know one third of them correct, and so the assessment points down here, um, we suffered a little bit of a rounding error. We we should have gotten three point three three points, but since we're not doing decimals, I only got three out of ten, um, and so I'm going to want to redo that one, and maybe do it all the way through next time, so I can <laughs> get a little better score. Um, and you know, so basically, all these exercises work kind of the same way. They they test different things. So reading, flashcard reading works a little. A little bit like the the live. Well, this one will quiz you on. Well, let's go ahead and do one of these. And I just want to mention quick here. We know that there's a lot to learning how to use in Streamia. Uh, we're working on making it easier Hold and on. better to understand. And 
um, in every way, and we do appreciate the many feedback comments we've gotten and ways to make it better and uh, things like that. We do expect you to, to take a little bit of time to learn it and get up to speed on it, but we, we think it'll be well worth it because of all the, um, the ways that it tracks progress and, and stuff like that. Absolutely. So here we're testing ourselves on what Ola means. I'm going to quickly choose number four and go on. <laughs> okay. Yamo. Um, and so next is, is Yamar. Yamo, me llamo Alejandro. Um, what does Yamo mean? Um, and this one's a little bit tricky. He's saying my name is Alejandro, but, you know, in Spanish we know it actually means I call myself Alejandro, so we're going to choose call. Okay. And then... You know, and here it's it's actually chose. I think we're from somewhere. Is it Europe or United <laughs> States? Okay, so it's you know it's somewhat of an intelligent question. We're going to choose the United States. Anyway, the point is to learn um, what these different words mean and to see them in an actual exercise context. So you can see here, if you remember, this is from Scott's introduction. Soy alto. Um, and here you can remember envisioning Scott, who's this, you know, awkwardly tall guy, 1.18 meters. So that's like, you know, six hey, feet. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's an Australian guy. Oh, really? Yeah. He's also tall. And oh. He, he borrowed a phrase from mine, which I highly recommend, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I see, because I haven't been doing my homework. And <laughs> this is also why Scott's put together this nice order and... There's, there's a method to the way these lessons are laid out here. Um, anyway, I skipped ahead, so I didn't even know what we were on. But I guess these were student introductions we were working on? That's right. Okay. So how cool is that? You can actually learn from the other students in your class and, and the things that they've written. So um, let's go ahead and go back to... Let's go ahead and look really quickly at the Explore tab. Um, Explore is where you can find your own videos to watch. So we encourage you to kind of, you know, have fun with the language, get excited about it, learn as much as you can. Obviously, um, you have to work through these, these homework assignments if you're going to keep up with the course. So you're going to want to do the ones Scott's explained. And, and these are really meaningful because they've got a nice explanation about them and, and follow a flow. But Getting just, you know, practice from some of the things that you personally find interesting is a great way to really get excited about the language and, you know, really learn a lot. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the Explore tab. And here it's uh, right off the bat, it's giving us some recommended videos. Okay, so it, th it knows I'm a newbie. Um, it's giving me all level one videos right here. Um, and, you know some reason, it just knows that I love this video. <laughs> I'm actually really shocked this one came up. Everyone makes fun of me for how much I love this video, but I'm going to play it for you because I just love it that much. My wife, who does most of the grading, Diana, hates this video, by the way. Okay, so it's pausing for us to choose what, you know, what fits in there. And by the way, um, something that works a little bit differently when you choose your own videos to watch um, is that it's going to, by default, it's going to take you to Live Recommended. Um, and Live Recommended is a mix of learning the, the listening and the reading and also the usage. So it does some grammar stuff. So it, it's a little bit different than... Um, you know, just learning one of the other exercises that focuses on one specifically. And you can, you can choose right here if you want to switch to another exercise or if you just want to watch the video. I know we get a, a lot of people are like, I love the exercises, but how do I turn them off? And, you know, it breaks my heart every time I hear that. But, of course, you can turn them off by clicking view only. Um, and here it's, you know, going to let you just focus on, on the words that appear without being quizzed on anything. And this is a, I mean, no. truly, no joke, this is a really great way to learn as well. The exercises are helpful, um, and they're great to have an interactive component, but this is really, really, truly great because you can, you can go through and learn what different sentences mean. Um, 
And, you know, and much to Diana's dismay, I quote phrases from this song all the time. <laughs> so, you know, you can learn and pick up phrases from, from real videos, and it's, you know, a great way to get, get your feet wet with the language. Um, oh, one more thing I want to point out. Oh, well, let me point out this really quick. So now that I clicked on that, it's no longer in my recommended videos because um, it already recommended it to me, and it's kind of thinking I already am learning it. So in order to find that one, we go down to our video collections here, and instead of recommended, we choose learning. And you can see this one's been added to our learning, learning one. And you can see the other ones that have are been added here are from the course that we've been working through here today. So all the different ones that I've clicked on so far appear in here. And this is how you can easily get to the different videos that you've seen before. Yeah, and, and I hope you find the, the videos interesting enough that you don't want to watch them once and then set them aside and never look, look at them again. Um, it's really important for you to learn and to really memorize these things to watch them you know, a week apart from each other or whatever. You don't have to sit and watch it 20 times in a row. But it's good to come back, so this is a good part to look at every now and again. Yeah, absolutely. And then Streamia is going to pick up words and sentences from the words uh, from the videos you're learning, so it's going to be reinforcing these. And, you know, it's great. When you go back um, a week later, I promise, even in a week's time, you'll go back to some of these ones that you thought were just so impossible, and it's going to have all the words that you've been working on. So um, all of the words that you've been focusing and doing your practice repetition are going to be from the videos that you're learning. So when you go back to that video, it's going to be like, oh, I remember that word. And actually, you know, Tarea, I just used this word today even. because, And I'm sure I learned it from this video. So <laughs> it really does work. Um, and so that that kind of shows the... One, oh, one more thing I wanted to show in the view pane. So we had one person who asked us if there's some kind of dictionary associated with Instreamia where you can keep track of uh, the different words that you're learning, and, and there is. So, in fact, Instreamia is keeping track of all kinds of things for you, and where you can find that is in this top right corner over here. So this is your word box. And you can even search for new words that you, are, that you want to look up, and you can also get to old words. And when you click on them, you can get to um, this detailed display of the words. You can also click on a word over here, and it'll be the same thing. It'll pull it up, and and you can find it. Um, you know, and it'll also come up here. So here's where we go through the definitions, um, and and uh, the word forms. So this is something Scott was showing. Scott, do you want to talk about these verb trees for a second? Sure. Um, you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of words. But <laughs> I don't blame you for it. Spanish, um, as with other Latin languages, they have a lot more forms for every verb. So the very first um, tense that we'll be learning, these things are organized by, by tenses, so you can see there's nine different tenses. So the very first one, um, for this verb it's concentra, is the present indicative tense, which is just the normal present tense. Um, and so, and you'll learn as part of lesson two how to conjugate the verb concentrar. They, they follow structured rules that you can actually go through and learn, and then there's exceptions to every rule. That's one of the reasons we love Spanish so much. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll learn, I think, three of these throughout the course. We'll learn present indicative, um, imperfect, and the preterite. So these top three, the first three that show up, are the ones that we'll be focusing on through this course. The first unit will be um, present, and then the other unit two will go through uh, in, imper imperfect and preterite. Cool. Well, I'm excited. I, I um, will be learning these with you guys, so uh, it should be good. And so we can close. You can hit the back button over here to close, or you can hit this one over here. Um, and so one more thing I guess we can go through really quickly is the progress screen. Currently, we have this this part right here. will show you your detailed progress from day to day um, once you start making some progress. And for the time being, we have this kind of, you can see, temporarily unavailable due to high traffic. So today we had so much traffic that calculating all of the reviews anyone's ever done for all of Instreamia, for all of our users simultaneously, was like a big task. And so 
we we need to figure out a little bit better way to do this. And don't worry, we're good at figuring these things out. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, by by later this week, we'll have this back online. So um, anyway, unfortunately, I can't show this to you right now. But down here, um, you can see the different concepts that you're learning. I'm surprised it doesn't show. Well, let's go ahead and go to recommended concepts since there weren't any concepts I was learning immediately. Um, here's, here's where you can find new words to learn if you want to just kind of go by, by which words are most common in the Spanish language. And, and you can also see uh, words that you've added stars to or you know, words that you're learning. So there you go. <laughs> this is what's in my brain right now. Just one word, unfortunately. But as you go, you'll start to see like it'll fill up and it'll look more like this. And you can click on these, figure out what they mean, and you can click to add, and then it'll be in your adding list. Um, yeah, and feel free to kind of quiz yourself on these, uh, especially when, once we get the, uh, the personalized one back up and running. You'll be able to see the ones of the, the words that you've seen in the last week, for example, in this quick view, and you'll be able to say, oh, hacer. What does that mean again? You know, you'll have to kind of quiz yourself and then open it up to look into it. Yeah, see, it means do or make. Um, we'll go ahead and learn that one. And then the ones that you added to your learn, so when you go back to active concepts, it, they're all there now. So fortunately for me, there's more than one um, word in my head. And also, in case you were wondering, the colors mean that it can be used as that, that tense. So concentrar means it can be... Re the word concentrar can be used as a verb, that's why it's green here. And cuando can be used as a noun, and it can also be used as kind of an auxiliary part of speech. So that's why it appears twice. And same with hacer. Um, in fact, hacer can be used in you know, a number of different ways. And so that's why it appears more than once. Um, and oh, and so let's go one more screen here. This is the mingle screen. I think a lot of you have already found this because my have there been a lot of comments this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's where you can see the most recently commented videos. Um, if you're, this this is a really good way to kind of interact with the different people on the site and and kind of leave comments and and talk about different things. So what we're hoping for this to be used for uh, currently, it's a little bit more of like technical support. That's okay too. Um, you can reach out to us any way you know how. But what we'd really like to see is people talking about what, what does this video mean, for example. So you watch it and maybe you think, wow, that's really inspiring. So you could write a little um, a sentence on it and just say, you know, and maybe you could write it in Spanish and, and get some writing practice. Or you could even write it in English. I think it's still useful. And, and talk about what you thought. Or ask questions, you know. He, he said this and this way. I don't understand this word. And um, this is a really easy way for us to... Um, you know, keep track of what everybody's saying because we can easily find it. So this is a good way to reach out to us. And you can see um, here, Linda K. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not saying that name right. She asked this question about why um, it sounds like Hernandez is being pronounced as Hernandez. Um, and Scott's explaining that it's that's kind of a regional accent on the S and it's not an H sound. Anyway, you can read about this later, but you can see there's some great discussions already starting here. Um, and if you're interested in meeting other people, you can, you can click learners to meet and you can see different people on the site who are using it and also how much progress they've made. Whoa, these guys are really working hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's really great. And that's the way you learn. So, you, you know, you chisel away at this stuff. So you can request to add them as friends. Once you add someone as a friend and they accept it, then you can use the messaging feature. Um... <laughs> Right here, this is, the, <laughs> this is the loneliest screen on all of Instreamia right now for me because there's no friends in my account. Um, anyway, once you start to get friends on Instreamia, you can click here and then you can share message with, messages with them and, you know, uh, practice Spanish here on Instreamia or maybe set up a time that you want to practice together. Um, you know, we really, we really encourage people making use of the community. I think all of you students are... Every, everyone involved in the course, including myself, I'm also a student in the course. Um, I think I think you guys are all a great group, um, and and I'm really looking forward to learning with everyone. So, 
uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And um, I just want to say for those of you who've experienced technical difficulties this first week, there's been a few rocky things for some people. We appreciate your emails and letting us know. If anyone else runs into trouble, just send us an email. We usually get back seriously within like 10 minutes or something. Um, and and don't don't feel bad to ask us questions. We're we're happy to help out. So um, and sometimes there is an actual issue that we need to fix, and and your emails can help us get to the bottom of it. So we really do appreciate that, and hopefully everything will be smooth sailing um, this next week, and no more server outages, and should be good. Thank you guys so much for uh, listening to this orientation, and best of luck. Vamos a aprender español. Vámonos. <laughs>